Hello, welcome to The Awakening. I'm your host, Angela Brown. Today's topic is going to be credit and divorce. My guest is back. You saw her last week. Her name is Chris Bridges. And we're going to discuss several things, you know, as far as being married and, and getting not married and saving money and all that good stuff. So sit back for the next 30 minutes, watch the show, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I'm going to enjoy doing it. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Well, good that was a quickie. You. How did you like the other show? Oh, I loved it. It was a, a wonderful time to come and just, you know, talk mm -hmm. with you. I thought we had a, had a great connection, and I'm really yeah. hoping that your listeners um, enjoyed the show and learned some, you know, they did, different tips like about I said, credit. I got over 15 phone calls in oh, the first also. 24 hours. Oh, great. Intendated. Isn't that the word, intendated with Inundated. something? Inundated. Inundated yeah. with it. So that's why I had to get you back on here. I can't answer the questions. <laughs> well, great. Well, let's see, let's see how well we okay, can do together. Okay, so let's talk about credit and divorce. Mm. You're the expert. Mm. Well, you know, that's, a, that's, that's not a... money. Yeah. It's not really a great subject to talk about because we don't want those things to necessarily go together. Mm -hmm. We, we want to build strong, healthy credit, but we don't want to necessarily see mm -hmm. people go to divorce. Mm -hmm. But it's, the statistics say that people... More people get divorced than, you know, than they should. One Let's leave three. it at that. One yeah, I know it's very, very high. Um, so I think what's important for, for people to understand is how to maybe protect your credit even before you get divorced and take it all the way back to even before you get married. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I found that, you know, couples get together and now in some cases, you know, you even go through premarital counseling and you talk about all kind of things like your financials, you talk about who's going to raise the kids, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to spank them or not, what schools are they going to go to, how often we're going to go spend time at the in-laws, mm -hmm. but we tend not to talk about credit. And I think that's a subject. Because we all have it. We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> or, or we don't have it and want we don't it. want to talk about yes, it. Yes. Or we think that it's good. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you walk to someone on the street and say, hey, how is your credit? The answer might be good. Mm -hmm. But or what's they could good? Pay to go to hell too. Right. I've heard that. <laughs> right. But but what's good, right? And yeah. so good is relevant to the way you perceive it or mm -hmm. what you believe and as you understand it. Mm -hmm. Good may not be someone else's good. So I, I really encourage couples when you, you you know you found the right one, and that credit is not a conversation to have on the first date. You know, let's let, let's kind of you know put that out there. That's mm -hmm. that's not a subject. At least wait a week, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> when you think that this person is going to maybe be my partner for life, mm -hmm. and I'm going to commit and 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 you know put my all into this relationship, mm -hmm. that's when I think you need to start talking about that. And it doesn't mean that if you find that someone's credit score isn't where yours is, that mm -hmm. that's not the person for you. They could still be your soulmate and the best partner mm -hmm. that you can have. But it may mean that you got to talk about. Why is that? You know, was it uh, mm -hmm. decisions that were made five years ago right. or are they decisions that are still being made? Maybe someone forgets to pay a bill and, you know, they're a good person. Well, that's my husband. He does it all the time. He pays late charges all the time. Well, then he may, <laughs> then see, he may have credit challenges. And so that means when you get married, those behavior change, you know, may not change. And so you realize, wow, you know, that could have been something we could have talked about. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's important to enter in a relationship, and especially a marriage, you know, being pretty forthright about mm -hmm. credit, talking about it, getting assistance if necessary, making sure, even if you're not both at 840, that you're, you're where you That's are. That's as you can go, right? Yeah, 850. But you're right about okay. there. It depends on the scoring system. Mm -hmm. um, but at least you know where you are, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got a plan of action to work through it. And then while you're married, you know, the importance of uh, balancing credit. Mm -hmm. A lot of couples get together, and if only one spouse has a job or is working, they'll put everything in that spouse's name. Where that's they're, not good. Uh, that's a little unsafe because you can you better you, believe it's scary. Yeah, you build credit in just one mm -hmm. spouse's name, and then something can happen. Uh, divorce can happen. We're talking mm -hmm. about that on this show. Uh, you know, someone can unfortunately maybe lose a life, and and then the, the remaining spouse doesn't have any credit to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So it's important to build and maintain positive credit mm -hmm. with both 
Which means you may have to get accounts, different accounts. You know, maybe right. get some joint accounts, get some single accounts. Don't put everything in both, you know, both parties' name. Mm -hmm. And be strategic about it. But it's really important to, to manage credit that way, even when you're married. I think you ought to discuss with one another before you buy something as well. I think so, too. And I like the rule, finding mm -hmm. the dollar amount that kind of works in everyone's household. Because right. it, may exactly. be, it may be $50 in, in someone's mm -hmm. house, or it may be $5,000. It depends on mm -hmm. where, how your financials are flowing. Right. But have a rule that neither one of us can spend a certain amount without the other party's permission. That's and right. that's, that's grown-up stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. big girl, big boy stuff. You've got to be willing to really make that kind of commitment in a relationship. But, but that could save a lot of problems later. Maybe if I'm out shopping and I see some shoes and I really want them and they're $500. Mm -hmm. But if $500 is the limit for my husband and I, mm -hmm. 100 is ours. But if, you know, whatever is that yeah. amount, then you call each other and say, is it okay for yeah. me to pay, pay for this? Mm -hmm. And no sneaking the bags in the back door. Oh, God, no. Or hiding in the trunk <laughs> of the car until he goes to sleep. <laughs> So we, we all know people who've done that, right? Oh, yes, yes. But so, I was in a place the other day. I've known Andy for a long time. And the guy came in wanting to sell little tiny pictures like this. Mm -hmm. And he says, would you like to buy one? And he says, I can't do that till I ask my wife. Mm. And he says, we never buy anything unless we talk it over. And I can tell you, that made my heart feel so mm -hmm. good. Even $20 he wasn't willing to spend without first talking to his wife. That's, that's great. Can't you, don't you think that's wonderful? I Andy? think that is wonderful. Andy, I'm talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's going to say, oh my gosh, she's talking about me on the air. Well, Andy, true. I applaud you as well because mm -hmm. what that says to me is, number one, you've set an expectation. You've talked mm -hmm. about something. You have an agreement about it. And from there, then, as long as you're upholding it, most likely mm -hmm. that won't be an area of, of, of concern mm -hmm. or conflict. So it's important. Whatever it is, decide what's best for us. Um, one of the things, my, my son is getting married. Oh, you told me about yeah, that. Yeah, he is. He's getting married in September, and I'm so, so proud of him. And one of the things that I said, I know he's going to watch this show, but one of the things is find out what works best for you and, and your fiance. Mm -hmm. Don't do what I do or, you know, what someone else does and you're trying to mm -hmm. emulate your relationship and how you manage, you know, your affairs with everyone else. Do what right. is best for you all mm -hmm. as you come to an agreement. You know, it's okay to sort of get different opinions and, and thoughts, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day and ultimately you want to do what's best for, for you as a couple. Exactly. Are they mm -hmm. going to have a big wedding? They are. Well, not, not too big. It's kind of a mm -hmm. mid-size. A mid-size? Yeah. So we're really excited about that. How old is he? He's 25. Now, don't ask too many questions now. I'm okay, all I know is my, my he's, on he's smart. Okay, I'm just going to put my word out there. He's smart, and you've been a good mother to raise him like that. I, questions He's done. very smart. They both are done. wonderful. All right, let's touch on some more of these questions. We've gone through the prenups. Mm. Right. We've also talked about uh, sharing our credit information with each other yes. before you get married. Yes. Okay, what happens, come on, you know more about this than I do. Give me a topic, something else we can really talk about. Well, we actually didn't talk about prenups, so let's talk about that. All right. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of opinions about whether or not someone should mm -hmm. have a, a, a prenup. And, uh, you know, everyone's financial dis situation can vary. Maybe if I have $5,000 in the bank, that's a lot of money to me. Or if I have $500,000 in the bank, that's a lot of money to me. So whenever we talk about financials, I'm always very sensitive mm -hmm. because you really have to go where people are, right? So it just depends. Mm -hmm. Maybe I only own one house and that's, you know, important for me to, to, to protect or I own 50 houses. Who cares what that, you know, mm -hmm. the, qu the quantity of that. Um, but a prenuptial, back to sort of setting expectations, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it if that's an agreement and if both parties, you know, are in favor of it. Okay. All it does is protect your assets that you may have built or had before you entered mm -hmm. into the relationship. And it's okay if one or both have it, and as long as you both agree to it. You mm -hmm. can't hide anything later. If you set all that up front, then if you happen to have to go through divorce, and it shouldn't be set up with an expectation or uh, a plan to get divorced. You know, right. divorce, a marriage is covenant. And, and is. marriage should be not entered into lightly, and quite honestly, you should not be uh, gotten out of unless you die. But things I happen, I right? Agree. You things, know, things happen. happen. Things happen. And if they, if, in fact, they happen that way, if you have prepared each other, because I do tell people, Angie, that the person you married is not the person you're going to divorce. No. So that's not the time. And we change. <laughs> they change. And They're most change. likely going to change. Yes, they yes, are. Yes, yes, they are. Yeah. 
I think the flowers are slower in coming. Uh, <laughs> the yeah. dinner dates are slower, blah, 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 you know. Yeah. But they really do change. And I think we as women, we really need to protect ourselves. But men need to do the same thing. Absolutely. And I, th I think you, when you were going through a divorce, um, obviously there were some things that happened. Mm -hmm. So even if it's an amicable divorce, even if it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's not angry and bitter and all of that, because you can expect, you know, really a war yeah, in that case. Yeah, it can but, be really bad. Yeah, even if it's not, you may not get the same level of agreement. Mm -hmm. So if you have some of those things discussed and set forth in the beginning, then you don't have to rely on people's emotions mm -hmm. when it comes down to making tough decisions because it's already been set up. I had a question from one gentleman. We're just going to call him Bill. Mm -hmm. He wanted. He says he thinks you're very smart. Ah, thank you, Bill. <laughs> and he'd like to know how far, have, how long have you been doing what you're doing, dealing with the credit and everything like this? And why did you go into the business in the first place? Wow, good question. Well, you, he said you were a very beautiful lady. Oh, how nice, Bill. Yes, thank you very Bill, much. Thank you. <laughs> but these were his questions. He says, see if you can get her to answer those. Oh, sure. Thank you. Well. I, um, you know, credit management was not something I thought when I was a little girl that I was going to do when I grow up. Mm -hmm. um, it's something. You didn't have a piggy bank and things like that? No, well, I, I think I had a piggy bank. I don't know. I have to ask my parents about that. <laughs> um, but it, it wasn't, you know, that's certainly not my, mm -hmm. where my education was in or what my uh, past career was in. What um, were you in? I, I actually was in, uh, worked in law firms for a little while. Oh, okay. um, I went to school at night. I was a returning adult. Uh, which mm -hmm. was a great experience for me. I got married very, very young, mm -hmm. uh, and I started having children young. And so I went to school um, at night, and I got a degree in business management. Good girl. Yeah, and then I uh, went from there, and I got into sales. I worked for Xerox for a little while, and then I, I got into um, uh, sales with another company. So I did um, outsourcing, kind of corporate stuff. You know, good job, right? You know, yeah. good job. Made money. Uh, made good money. money. <laughs> <laughs> Make money. Um, okay. <laughs> but but my husband uh, and I took a turn, and we actually went into entrepreneurship, and he started a mortgage company. And that's quite honestly where I think uh, my life really started to shift as far as mm -hmm. what I did every day. Were uh, you afraid when he did something like that? <laughs> afraid? Hmm. No, Scary. I, I, you know, I believed in my husband, and I still do. Uh, that's that everything the question that he does. you have to believe. Okay. Absolutely. So I wasn't afraid. Um, it was a it was a, a good actually it was one of the probably one of the best things that we could have done. It really? was a little struggle at some point, mm -hmm. but I think it opened up doors that we never really imagined. Mm -hmm. For me, it opened up an entire different career path and what I'm doing today because now I believe that this is more purposefully what I'm supposed to do. Really? So helping people. I didn't quite. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I sold contracts. I did multi million dollar business deals, but. That, that wasn't really fulfilling. That didn't really help someone, you know, their life. It didn't yeah. change their lives. But when you can change your life, isn't that wonderful yeah. thing? So today I'm impacting lives, and I'm hoping to change generations, quite honestly, with teaching and educating mm -hmm. on credit management. Children that's are going to need I that. I think we talked about that in the first show. Yeah. It's a major hole in mm -hmm. how we're educating our children. On, so when uh, he on came that. to you and said he wanted to do this, you were all for it? Yeah, absolutely. Good. Was, absolutely. So we opened up a mortgage company, and, um, and that's how I really started doing more formally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, consulting on credit, just helping out his clients, quite mm -hmm. honestly, getting one loan approved at a time, and oh, then okay. realized that uh, there was a need to assist people in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you seem happier about it anyway. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Well, he, Do the it, two of you work together alone? Did you get along good? <laughs> do you get along good? <laughs> <laughs> do we now or did we then? Well, either well, let's both go of now. them is the both answers are yes. Okay. Um, we work very differently, so what but I think we complement. What is your What is your job with him? Well, now we don't. So now we actually don't have the business. He's uh, oh, you're out yeah, of that. We're one. out of the business. Uh -huh. He's still in the business. He's just doing some things. He works with a local community bank. So, mm -hmm. and he's uh, really enjoying himself now and, and uh, making changes and impact there. Mm -hmm. um, so life is good. Okay. Uh, so he still lets me have my 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 uh, business on mm -hmm. the side, mm -hmm. um, and so he's very very supportive, you know, of me and and I am with him. So do you do a lot of long hours in the daytime for your job? I do not because I have a five year old. You do have so a five-year-old. I do. I have a five-year-old. Oh. So I really... Um, How did you go from 24 to 5? Don't ask that question. It's too much to go through <laughs> on the air, okay? Because <laughs> my oldest is 25. Yeah. Okay. So but we'll just let, your, wonderful. We'll let your viewers uh, pray for me right now. Pray for her, everybody, please. <laughs> Yeah, so no, it's, I have a good balance. I okay. have a great balance. I couldn't have done, done this if I uh -huh. worked in my uh, past jobs before. No, you couldn't have done it at all. Yeah. It'd have been very, very difficult. Yeah, it would have been. So tell me a little bit more. These people out there that's called me, they want to know more about you. Oh, okay. 